Hey guys, this is Noam with uh, 2D data recording, uh, data analysis at Chuckwalla going clockwise, uh, comparing my own lap uh, versus uh, World Superbike Rider that's uh, on my bike. Uh, today I want to talk about roll rates, not to be confused with roll speeds, uh, where roll speeds is, you know, the, the mile an hour, the speed that we are uh, doing at any uh, particular corner. Roll rates is how quickly do we tip in the bike. Um, you know, when we talk about roll rates, uh, we, we, need, we, we do it in, in, in degrees per second. So if we're going straight up and down and we're going to go into a left-hand turn and we're going to get to 50 degrees, how quickly do we go from zero degree lean angle, straight, ver straight vertical, to 50 degrees? If we do it at 50 degrees per second, uh, that would be our roll rate. It would take us exactly one second to go from vertical to 50 degree left hand turn uh, lean angle. If we're going to do 25 degrees per second roll rate, it would take us exactly two seconds <clears throat> to go from zero degrees straight and vertical to 50 degree lean angle. So we kind of want to compare. Uh, uh, for this video, I'm just going to focus on the the roll rate when it comes to increasing lean angle. Uh, at a later video, we could look at the roll rates, or as we call it, picking up the bike. How f how quickly are we picking up the bike? Roll rates is when it comes to uh, coming out of corners. So this one will only be about tip in rates, r r roll rates for going into corners. So first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna bore you guys with a little bit of physics, okay? Uh, we want to understand um, what makes the bike uh, roll, uh, just like in an airplane. You know, what makes it tip in? Uh, there's two schools of thought about this, and uh, there's only one truth. Um, there's the first school of thought is that it's counter steering, which you guys have all heard of, and the other one is uh, body steering. You know, I'm I'm pushing the bike. Uh, Again, I'm pushing my, my, my leg against the tank. I'm pushing my right leg against the right side of the tank, and I'm pushing the bike uh, <clears throat> in, and, and that's why it's uh, rolling. That's why it's changing its lean angle. Uh, that is so false, uh, I, I can't even begin to describe how bad that is. Uh, I don't care who you are. It, it, it's awful. It never happens in the real world just in the same way that um, you can't sit in your car and push on the steering wheel forward hard and push and push and push as much as you want. That car is not going to go forward. It will never do it. You're in a closed system. Okay, um, it's the same way if you're sitting in your car and you put your your car on scales, uh, four scales, one for each tire, and then you're gonna push as hard as you can with your legs against the floorboard of your car, and you have your buddy look at the scales, and guess what? They'll see no difference. You're in a closed system; it does nothing. It absolutely doesn't do anything. I want for those of you who think that you could use body steering, uh, I will find you a bike like an S1000RR BMW with cruise control, and I'll put it at 60 miles an hour. We'll set that cruise control so you could take your hands off the, off the handlebars, and I'll have you ne negotiate some chicanes, and uh, you will go in the dirt uh, because that bike is not really going to change it direction for you. It's the same as uh, you being on a swing and you start kicking your legs back and forth. Well, slowly and eventually you could create this oscillating motion uh, and, and maybe within 30 seconds you can actually be swinging like a normal human being, but nothing is going to is going to be the same as you know you pushing off the ground with your legs or a buddy of you pushing you on that swing you know getting you going up and down um so i think that generally speaking when i talk to people about half of the people think that it's counter steering and the other half think that it's body steering um and the half that think that it's counter steering uh good for them Touche, but uh, they know 
how it works, but they don't understand why it works. Uh, nobody understands why it works uh, that I've ever ran into, um, but I'm, I want to explain that to you guys right now. So first of all, on how it works. Well, that's very easy, right? If you want to roll your bike to the left, so if you want to initiate a left lean angle, you we have this thing called push to turn, right? Uh, you push on the left handlebar, and the bike will roll over to its left, or you could pull on the right handlebar, and the bike will roll over to its left. If you want to initiate a uh, right lean angle, uh, you will push the right side of your bar, or you will pull the left side of your bar. Okay, great. So why does that work? Why does that work so well and so magically? Um, I want you to imagine putting your um, motorcycle on the bed of your pickup truck. And I want you to imagine not tying it down and just sitting on it. Okay, sitting on it and then just tiptoeing with your feet touching the ground just enough to, to keep the bike from falling. Okay, now I want you to have your best buddy jump into the pickup truck and drive around okay and he's gonna go 60 miles an hour and then all of a sudden he's gonna flick the steering wheel to the left and start a left hand turn kind of aggressive like left hand turn and i want you to imagine what's gonna happen to your bike and um, if you can't imagine then maybe you should do it but we can all imagine that the bike is gonna want to fall over to its right side Okay, so again, you're on the bed of the truck with a bike on it, and you're tiptoeing, and your buddy's driving the truck, and now he's going to turn the wheel to the right, and the truck is going to start turning to the right, and guess what? Your bike is going to want to fall over to its left side. So all now your left leg is basically going to be bracing really hard to keep that bike from falling, to over to its left and your right leg is going to need to do nothing because that bike just wants to fall over on its left side. I hope that visual visualization kind of strikes strikes a point where where you could see how that would actually happen in real life. If not, you should just try it or just when you're driving in a car, you know, turn the wheel to the left side, just kind of jerk it to the left side and you could feel everything just wanting to move to the right side or even if you're just negotiating circles uh, left left hand circles um, you'll feel everything in that car um, your cup of coffee whatever you got loose hanging out on the dashboard everything will want to go towards the right side of the car so everything wants to fall over to the right so in a motorcycle the steering column and the front tire is is very much like in a car uh, when you when you push it so let's talk about a left hand turn on a motorcycle we want to initiate a left a left side lean angle what we need to do is we need to turn that truck remember the the truck analogy we need to tr turn it to the right we need to turn it to the right in order for our system to fall over on its left a bike doesn't lean it actually just falls so what what do we do we push to turn right we push the left handlebar forward and the right handlebar inwards towards us and what does that do it points that front tire to the right side just like turning the steering wheel in a car to the right so we're turning to the right to make the bike fall to the left until we reach a lean angle that we're happy with and then we let go and we become a passenger just like we're a passenger on a straightaway we could get into uh, great depths about motorcycle dynamics, and I, I really plan to because about the stability and the, the geometry that a bike has. Uh, we are, I, I love it when like an old grandma like talks to me. She's like, oh, no, you ride motorcycle. You might must have a great sense of balance. And I think to myself, actually, balance has nothing to do with it. The motorcycle is just doing it for me. I mean, what we're really doing on motorcycles is that we're, initiating lean angles and then we're along for the ride and then we're getting rid of lean angles lean angles and we're a passenger again okay so if you guys want to hate on me please uh do so 
I would love that. Uh, tell me how you're pushing the bike down with your with your with your thigh and with your with your leg, uh, and, or ask me exactly in in more detail. I could clarify some more about the the counter steering. But try it on the highway. If you if you ride the streets, just just push a little bit on the highway. P- push the inside bar forward, and and, and watch that bike just want to tip in. Uh, that's exactly what's happening. So let's dive into the data. On the top here, we have lean angles. In the middle, we have miles per hour, which we won't be using for this one. And then here at the bottom is a math channel that I created for the tip in speeds, roll rates, for the tip in roll rates. So let's go ahead and start with turn two at Chukwala. Um Actually, let's do a turn one because it is a turn. So turn one, we could see that his... So again, I'm in uh, red, he's in blue, and we could see the roll rates uh, right here for him, where my mouse is, and right there for me. So turn one, we could see that his roll rate, roll rate to the to the left, uh, because turn one is a left-hander, is 22 degrees per second, and mine is around six, and I actually got it maxed out here to about eight. But it looks like he's very decisive about his tip end point, about where he actually wants to get that bike just leaned over. And believe me, he's pushing. He's pushing to turn um, or pulling on the opposite hand on the opposite side. Doesn't matter. Same thing. But we could see that he does that in a very decisive way. And his roll rates are faster. Okay. Now for turn two, we can actually see that his roll rate is 57 degrees per second. So it would take him less than a second to achieve the uh, 49 degree lean angle that he's about to go to. It'll take him less than a second to do so. But and also my my roll rate is 46. So his is. 56.7 degrees per second and mine is 46. But here's what's more interesting here for myself is that he tips over the bike from the left to the right for turn two sooner than me. He starts, he does it earlier than me. And with a 2D data recording, we got these great tools. I could just, this is where he starts his tip into the right. And this is where I start mine right about there. And here at the top, we could see the DS, which is 17.2 meters. So he, he, he rolls his bike. He tips it in to turn two, 17 meters before I do. And he does it quicker. Probably, um, probably if I do it uh, uh, sooner, I would need to understand uh, like visually where the points are on the track better than I do right now. It is my belief. I mean, I know I've ridden this track hundreds of times. And I think within half a day, this world superbike rider uh, understood and knew the track better than I do and probably ever will. Okay, turn three. That's interesting. Um, He actually rolls, tips into turn three uh, less aggressively than me at 18 degrees per second and I get to 24. Uh, Again, this is not like a measuring contest here, like who does who does it more? I mean, what it looks like here is that he he turns into turn three shallower than me. And he doesn't have to kind of panic do it fast. Uh, I might be doing it a little too late. And then I sort of panic. And now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of do that. I I turn in too late and I panic, so I have to lean the bike more decisively, where I think he is able to maintain a smoother uh, transition into turn three than I do. Uh, let's go into turn um, turn six. That's the next interesting one, is his roll rate is 65 degrees per second, and mine is 23, okay? And his is so decisive. Mine hits 23, and I tip it in for for just a few milliseconds at 23, and then I slow it down, and then I speed it up again. It's like I'm not really sure where my turn in point is. Uh, And I'm not going to say that's why my roll rates are slower than his. Uh, He's also more – I think he's definitely applying more pressure on the bars to counter steer, which is what's creating his bike to actually change lean angles quicker than me okay uh let's keep going into turn 
um, into turn eight. Again, his roll in rate, his roll rate is 28 degrees per second and minus 25 into turn nine. So the transition between turn eight right hander to turn nine left hander, he does it very decisively and very quickly at 61 degrees per second, and I do it at 39 degrees per second. And same happens from the left hander in turn nine to the right hander in turn 10. He he flicks it from the left side to the right side at 50, 85 degrees per second, and I do it at uh, 66. I will tell you guys, I do it pretty fast there, and it's pretty scary, and, and that's probably my best roll rate that I achieve on this track, uh, and he does it more, and, and I bet it's pretty easy for him. Uh, let's keep going. Again, Oh, this is this is a really nice one. The one the transition between turn 11 and 12, kind of going down that hill. I'm always kind of afraid of my front end there, so I'm afraid of get, putting a lot of counter steering input. Uh, but his roll rate actually from the right hander to the left hander there is 73 degrees per second and minus 37. So his is more than twice faster uh, change of lean angle than me. And going into the bowl, again, it's super decisive. 85 degrees per second's roll rate happens a little early, earlier than me. It's totally committed where mine is at 42. So his is, again, uh, twice faster than me. Again, we see this place of decisiveness into turn fifth, uh, 14. He knows exactly where the turn in point will be for himself. And he does 34 degrees per second. And I start tipping in the bike, but I'm kind of feeling like, oh, I think I'm doing it a little too early. Oh, that's where I should do it, right here. Uh, and then it's, of course, too late. And we see that with the mile an hour stuff. Uh, and I'll get to 20 degrees per second roll rate. And again, into turn 16, that's a great example of him being decisive uh 43 almost 44 degrees per uh second roll rate where i'm still going straight so he does it earlier than me he starts starts to turn earlier than me with more speed i mean he actually rolls in this bike as he accelerates so look at this gps miles per hour graph he's he's he it, it's kind of strange but he doesn't mind going from zero degree lean angle to to about uh, 30 degree lean angle. He's already kind of initiating that that quick roll in rate to prepare for that corner. So that's that's really awesome. Uh, let's take a look at one more thing I guys want to show you. So so what what did uh, this world superbike rider achieve really? What was his highest high, highest uh, roll rates? They're around. It's right here. Uh, 84 degrees, 85 degrees per second. Let's go ahead and look at uh, Chavi Vieje, which is a, a Moto2 rider. Uh, let's look at his data from Valencia and uh, see what he gets just for fun. Uh, just bear with me, guys. Let me prepare this data. So Chavi Vieje, qualifying session, Moto2. Valencia 2016 the first thing I need to do is add a little filtering to our lean angles and let's add a little filtering to um, to the roll rates okay so Chavi Vieje roll rates so maybe not as aggressive I mean 53 degrees per second uh, we're seeing some 47 degrees per second. Again, a pretty flowing track. Um, just while I have it on here, though, I got to show you some of these lean angles. They're incredible. Uh, 55.6. You know, he has no problem. He's pretty much achieving all these high lean angles uh, pretty much everywhere. It's really nice. Or, for example, from earlier videos, I showed you guys the, uh, the throttle histogram. Like, you know, are they on or off the throttle? Or how much time are they spending at full throttle? How much time are they spending at no throttle? How much time are they spending at like babysitting the throttle? Look at his. It's just an on and off switch. It's just like either he's on or off. I don't even know why they give these guys a throttle. Why, why it's not just a rocker switch. 
anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, I welcome any hate messages about um, uh, against counter steering, and I want you guys to tell me why body steering works. So, anyway, thanks for watching.